know it is a beautiful day here in Asheville and I am going to the River Arts District to check out the Wedge Studios. There's an amazing artist there, Creative Kevin, and he's been having a showing of his amazing work. So I thought I'd go check it out and let you all see it as well. All right, I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Well, hey there, Kevin. How's it going today? Great. Welcome to my studio. Oh, this is fantastic. How long have you been here? Uh, so I've been at Wedge for a little over six months. Um, Sandra Bontanelli was nice enough to let me lease her space. And so Sandra and Pearl left here and opened up their own gallery studio space called the Modern Muse in the Riverview Station. Go check it out. It's awesome. Well, so now I get to have this amazing, beautiful space with the train and the river Whoa. and all the energy <laughs> out there. And so this is my chaos corner. Um, <laughs> usually the cart is out of the way when I'm painting and going back and forth and I paint on both walls and on the floor depending on what I'm working on. Uh, and the latest projects right now is I'm doing a show in Charlotte that is focused, it's called Focus. Uh, so I've completed six pieces over there on the wall and then I got about 20 or so more that I'm working on right now. Oh, that's good. And the whole purpose of this, for me, is a reminder to take time to focus on whatever I am doing to grow and to self-improve and ultimately be a better husband, a better father, and a better human. And a lot of that, for me, comes through meditating. So these pieces, for me, are actually a weird form of meditation. And when they're created, they remind me to go meditate more. So that's, that's kind of what this whole show is all about for me. That's why it's called Focus. <sighs> So why art? How did you get started? Man, so I wanted to be an artist my whole life. I wanted to be. I have been an artist my whole life and I've always loved art and I actually wanted to go to school for art. Uh, but I grew up in Northeast Ohio in a very sheltered, wonderful life and there were some right tracks of life to go on and I never questioned those. So when I wanted to go to school for art, my father said, I don't want to go to my basement your whole life, go do something different. So I went down the civil engineering path, got an undergrad in that, and then I got a master's in structural engineering had my dream job in Chicago designing skyscrapers, and I hated it. And I, up to that point, I never really questioned what I was doing with my life. It was one or two jobs, retire, and then die. Which is fine, there's nothing wrong with that for anybody, it just, I didn't realize that wasn't what I wanted. Fast forward a little bit, quit the job in Chicago, moved to Charlotte, became an IT project manager, IT process improvement individual in the tech space in corporate America. Did that for about three or four years, quit that, and then started a co-working space focused on empowerment, and community building. And that was our whole thing. And I ran that for about six years. We had about 4,700 square feet to start, and we finished up with just shy of 30,000 square feet in about six years. And we had a team of about four people and about 400 some members. And it was this really vibrant, amazing community. We had an event space, a podcast studio, a gallery, um, a ton of different working areas and meeting rooms and whatever you needed to ultimately be productive, we tried to provide, along with a real community to tap into. That was my whole background, and I really, really loved that. But in the background, there was always this love for art that I just could never find the right venue or the right avenue to really pursue. And I couldn't get over societal's pressure to not be an artist full time. Finally, uh, moving to Asheville, having a kid, uh, COVID life, all these things bubbled up and I realized it was time for me to uh, move to my next chapter of life. So I sold my old company and did doing a lot of soul searching about what can I do to make a difference in this world as a white privileged male. So I was looking at starting a nonprofit, joining a nonprofit, creating a company, not creating, finding a company with the right culture fit that I could fit into and really align to their mission and nothing was hitting. And finally one day my wife was like, why don't you just be an artist full time? Like you've always wanted to do it. This is the place to be an artist full time is in the River Arts District in Asheville. There's nothing like this in the world, at least in the country, I can't speak to the world, but I'm sure this is a really unique place globally as well. And as soon as I committed, I read The Artist's Way, and, I was, and as soon as the book is like, you have to commit to the universe, and you're gonna do it. I'm like, all right, universe, I'm gonna be a full-time artist. 
fuck it, bring it on. And then uh, all these doors started opening and I've just been following everyone I possibly can and uh, very quickly was able to get into the space at Wedge and have been here for six months and uh, it's just been amazing and wonderful and have, has evolved in ways I never could have imagined. Uh, that is just wonderful. What a fantastic story. And, you know, don't you think artists have a different way of looking at life than, say, technical or corporate America? I would like to think we have the best way of looking at life, but, you know, there, I don't think there's any wrong way to go about living life. I just, there are days when I don't take myself seriously or I say, you know, people are like, oh, you just go paint all day. That must be cute and fun. And it is cute and fun and it's amazing, but it's my career path and it's my soul and my purpose and I'm pouring my life into it. Uh, so it's really easy for folks to just brush off an artist uh, because, you know, typing on the computer all day is significantly to get more important. Don't get me wrong, there are jobs that are important, very important to view. Um, I do think artists and being an artist full time is a really, it's just super unique uh, and to feel <laughs> absolute and utter enjoyment to be here every day I'm really grateful that I'm here where I am now and we've worked hard to get to this point and we've set up a foundation that if I fail or anything catastrophic happens we can still enjoy the lifestyle that we've worked so hard to have uh, and so I'm not living the, the artist strife or the you know surviving on a bag of apples kind of situation um, and I'm not really sure I'm going with this. I'm rambling now, but I'm just, I guess a long story short, I'm just grateful I'm here. Yeah, and so is everyone. It's just, you know, adding beauty to the area. How wonderful is that? Yeah, I, uh, yes. And so what's your creative time of the day, would you say? Right now, it's when I can be. Uh, it's basically when I have time. I wish I could have more of a habitual schedule, but for now, it's I basically drop my daughter off at school and come straight here on 8.15, 8.30. And on a perfect day, I'm here all day till about 4.15. Most days are not perfect. There's a meeting in the middle of it or something comes up in my family, someone gets sick, whatever it is. Uh, but fortunately, through all those stop, starts and stops every day, I can get in the creative mode pretty quickly uh, when I come into my studio. Once I'm here, it's a very different feeling. Uh, I can't, I don't feel the same way when I'm anywhere else. Fabulous. And do you have any music that you enjoy listening to to spark your creativity? <laughs> I listen to a lot of different genres. Uh, but every day when I get here, I play the same song. It's called Underlands by Andrew Bird. I just discovered him about a year ago and I really like his music. There's just there's a bunch of books about the importance of having a habit so that your mind just automatically can jump faster into the creative process. And like Stephen King writes uh, every day at 8.30 on his coffee table with the same cup of coffee, the same music playing on repeat. And he writes for like two hours. And you can produce way more work by doing two hour chunks every day than you could if you wait to do one big weekend session once a month. So, I agree. I so, definitely believe that. Yeah. So the more factors that I can have in my environment that are consistent, uh, the faster I can get down to the to the, the hard stuff of actually creating. So okay. now do you have a specific artist that you really enjoy and respect their work? Uh, I I like a lot of artists uh, globally in in Asheville, but I know a lot of artists personally in Charlotte because I was there for ten years and they've really kind of help push me and help inspire me and I look up to them a lot and they're all I would say very very successful and very very talented and one of them is Nico Mortigi he uh, he's in Charlotte he's been there a while he produces amazing work like every day the guy's a machine very down-to-earth hustler he's crazy but I love him uh, and he's just super inspirational to me like every day he's always producing something amazing and he moves a lot of work too Fantastic. Well, great. Well, um, I know that you do a wonderful commission work. I'm sure there's a lot of people interested in you know, utilizing your creativity to create a masterpiece for their home. How do you go about that if someone were to say, I don't really know what I want, but I want something really cool and different in my home? Sure. I do a lot of commissions, actually. I have, once I get through these pieces in the middle, like that, I want to get halfway through these pieces next week. That I'm going to start some of my backlog of commissions I have to get started on uh, and I'm grateful I have these but every commission I do usually starts off with just quick logistics where's it going what size we think it would be ideal price point how is it going to get to you timetables and once we all agree on those items then we dive into the fun stuff uh, what I like to 
if I don't know the individual who's commissioning me, I try to ask them as many questions as possible just to get to know who they are, what are their interests, what are they into, and then really dive into what do they want the piece to be about. Some folks start with, here's a photo I really like, here's a clipping from a magazine that I like, here's a wallpaper color, I love this rug color, can you do your style in this thing? But what I search for more is what do they want to feel when they look at the piece at the end of the day? And that usually opens up a can of worms about emotions and ideas and topics and oh well I love my dad I want this about that or I want to feel like my grandma and then that gets down a whole rabbit hole of a lot of interesting stuff and what I do is when I'm painting not only am I thinking about like the client and their ideas and what they want the piece to feel like and what they want the piece to represent and what that means to them I'm pouring myself into it and I'm pouring them into it in a weird way but also I have all these layers and so if there's a layer that I can incorporate something special into it, I try to. So for example, one client, hummingbirds were a significant component in their life. And the piece was going in their new baby's nursery. And the hummingbirds were like significant of their grandma. So one of the, they didn't want hummingbirds on it, but one of the layers, I drew a bunch of hummingbirds with markers, like rough outlines. And most of it got completely covered up by the end of the piece. And you can see like one little wing. You would have no idea that was a hummingbird at the end of it. But they, I told them this was a layer that I incorporated and that just made it all the more unique and special. And that's kind of the, that's what I try to do. Uh, but the commission work is scary. It is nerve wracking because I don't like to show the client what I'm creating until the very end. Uh, so there is a lot of trust and a lot of faith that what I am creating, they do want. Uh, and so far it's been great. I've not had anyone that does not love their piece yet. But I, they don't. I mean, I want everyone to love whatever I create for them. So I will go back and update it if I ever have to. Oh, fabulous. Well, thank you once again so much for taking the time. You have an amazing studio here. You're such a talented guy. And the community sure is happy you chose Asheville River Arts to do your craft. I'm grateful to be here. And the community here is just amazing. It is. Everyone is so supportive. And I did not expect that. I didn't really know what to expect, but everyone just helps each other out. And it's like the rising tide raises all ships, especially on our floor. Uh, and I'm just really, really, really grateful to be here. Wonderful, wonderful. Oh, and one last thing. Is there something that people might not know about you that you'd like to share? I've been playing piano since third grade. I have not played it seriously for about the last five years, but I just bought a piano like a month ago. So I've been futzing around on that and my daughter's now starting to try to play. So that's, this is, we're kind of off to the next chapter of this. We'll see where it goes. Awesome. All right, you take care. Thanks so much. Thank you very much. All right, bye. See you.